Are you excited for the new M2 MacBook Air? Well, I am. Despite the price tag, it looks like a really promising laptop, especially because it's been such a long time since the Air lineup got a refresh. But it's not all sunshine and daisies. There are a couple of massive issues plaguing the launch of the M2 MacBook Air. SSD contamination in some Japanese factories, rumors of the M2 chip overheating and thermal throttling, massive supply chain issues in China causing manufacturing delays, slow M2 MacBook SSD speeds. Oh, and Tim Cook still won't reply to my DMs. So in this video, I'm going to break down all of these topics, sift through all of the clickbait out there, and try to figure out just what the hell is happening to the new M2 MacBook Air, including turning the fans on my M2 MacBook Pro off to simulate what kind of performance we might see on the Air. Okay, so let's start with something that is completely legitimate and will probably affect you if you're looking to buy one of these new M2 MacBook Airs. Unless you're one of the very first buyers, it's probably gonna take a long time for it to actually arrive. Like I mentioned previously, due to a number of certain global situations going on right now, the global supply and logistics chain is stretched to its breaking point. To put this into perspective for you, buying a 40-foot shipping container would have cost you under $2,000 in 2020. Now though, you're not getting change out of 10 grand, which is a 500% increase in just two years. And this is just the actual shipping container itself. It doesn't take into consideration all the other costs involved like packaging, cost of raw materials, fuel, or even the shipping of the actual container itself. Now, the M2 MacBook Air is a brand new chassis. So manufacturing likely only started a few months ago, right in the middle of all of this. We're still seeing massive delays on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, and they've been available since October last year. Now, this is a big problem in my opinion, because let's say for example, you have an old Mac and it breaks or it stops working and you need to buy a new one ASAP, you won't be able to wait six, eight, 12 weeks for a new M2 MacBook Air to arrive. So you'll be forced to buy something else like an M1 MacBook Air brand new or go to the secondhand market instead. Hello, editor Liam here with an update to what I've just said. Now it is 10.30 p.m. on Friday the 8th of July in Australia right now. The M2 MacBook Air has been available to order online for about the last half an hour. And you can see down here that if we just wanted to buy the base model, which I was able to do about half an hour ago, luckily, we're looking at a shipping date anywhere between the 29th of July and the 5th of August. So that's almost a month away from now, worst case scenario. And let's say, for example, you want to get a 16 gigabyte upgraded Mac. So if I click on this upgrade option here, you can see that delivery estimate balloons out to potentially halfway through August. So it does look like these are selling out quick and Apple doesn't really seem to have a lot of stock available. Okay, let's move on to the whole M2 SSD situation. Now I did a video recently on the base model 256 gigabyte M2 MacBook Pro SSD, and I found it was significantly slower than the M1 MacBook Pro. Long story short, Apple typically uses at least two NAND chips on their Apple Silicon Macs, and these two chips work in tandem to maximize speed. By shipping the MacBook with only one NAND chip, the speeds are significantly reduced as you can see here. Now, like I said in that video, most people probably won't notice the difference, but there are some situations where you will. For example, transferring files and data on and off your SSD, or when you've used up all your physical RAM and have to rely on swap memory. And yes, the latter can be noticeable. If you have a few Chrome tabs open and maybe a couple of Word and Excel documents too, that can be enough to make a significant difference to performance in some situations, especially if you're trying to export or render something while you have other programs open. Now there's every possibility that this is Apple just screwing us all and cutting costs, but it might go a little bit deeper than that. Remember when I mentioned that whole SSD contamination thing previously? Yeah, I wasn't joking. Western Digital and Kioxia lost 6.5 exabytes worth of their NAND flash storage in January due to contaminated materials. That's 6.5 billion gigabytes. And I don't even wanna work out how many 128 gigabyte SSDs that works out to be. A lot. Now iFixit teardowns have shown that these NAND chips are used in, you guessed it, the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. 
So only time will tell what the SSD situation will be like on the new M2 MacBook Airs. Personally, I don't really know what's gonna happen. Uh, I do feel like Apple is going to prefer to ship them with the two NAND chips, but if it comes down to one of two options, option one, uh, not shipping at all, or only shipping with one NAND chip, guess which decision Apple is going to go with. Finally, we come to the most controversial topic, and that is the supposed overheating of the M2 chip. Now I have a whole video on this topic going into a lot of depth, so I will link that and I encourage you to check it out. Long story short, the M2 MacBook Pro does not overheat, unless it's a really unique, stupidly specific benchmark. But the M2 chip does run noticeably hotter than the M1, by about five to 10 degrees. This is due to the increased clock speed of the CPU, GPU, and increased power draw of the M2 chip itself sucking up about five watts more than the M1 while under load. Now the M2 MacBook Pro was able to keep this under control via its fan, but this will be a little trickier on the fanless M2 MacBook Air, despite the improved chassis. As a little sneak peek, I manually set the fans on my M2 MacBook Pro to the lowest possible setting to simulate what kind of results we might see on the M2 Air. Now I couldn't turn them off fully, unfortunately, the lowest I could get was 1200 RPM, and and yeah, it wasn't pretty. The CPU cores got quite toasty, and this is during a Cinebench benchmark, which utilizes the CPU cores only. And don't forget, both the M2 MacBook Pro and M2 MacBook Air share the exact same type and number of CPU cores. Now, granted, the M2 MacBook Pro was not designed to be passively cooled, so take these results with a massive grain of salt. But even then, I only noticed about a 6% decrease in performance between when I had the fans on default, where they kicked up to around 4,000 RPM, versus manually setting them to the lowest setting. Now that's pretty impressive. And again, like I mentioned in my previous video on this topic, I think the performance difference between the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro will be about the same as the previous M1 generation. One more thing I thought I'd mention, and this is something that's going to affect M2 MacBook Air sales. Just look at the crazy prices of used M1 MacBook Airs on the second hand market. They're now at the bargain price of anywhere from 600 US dollars to 800 or $850 for refurbished models from the Apple website itself, which are as good as brand new MacBooks. So I think it's gonna be very hard to justify what will potentially be a five to $600 price difference between a lightly used M1 MacBook Air and a brand new M2 MacBook Air. That works out to be about a 50% premium. Anyway, lots of really interesting stuff floating around out there. We're not gonna tell for sure, obviously, until the M2 MacBook Airs start shipping and we start receiving them in. So I'm excited to definitely test it out. But apart from that, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll catch you in the next one.